Hello my friends, how are you doing? So today I'm gonna do some architecture photography and show you a really cool black and white technique. Let's do that. Here we are back in Affinity Photo and today I want to show you a super powerful technique for creating this beautiful fine art architecture look. This is very different from how you usually create a black and white look for an image. So this was suggested by Francesca. It is based on a video by Ben Harvey. I have linked it below. He has a beautiful channel on Photoshop editing and before we get started here, we have to really understand what makes this technique so powerful. So let's look at the original photo here and you can see that the light situation in that picture is very different, especially if you look at that part down here. You can see that the values up here and the values down here are pretty similar actually. But when you look at the finished version, you can see that this part is very dark and this part is rather bright and has high contrast. I want to point out to you another change that I did. Look at these white lines that are happening here around the right side of the edges, not the left side of the edges. You can see there are highlights here, but if we look at the original picture, there are no highlights here. So what this technique is doing is using light and shadow to shape the surface of the building and guide the eye so it basically is turned into a beautiful sculpture and really brings out the characteristics of the building that you want to pronounce. Okay, so let's go through the steps on how I did that. First of all, of course, we have here our original picture. And then I also took a separate picture just of the sky with some clouds. And the reason I did this is to give me more freedom on where I want to have the clouds and how I want to shape them, right? Okay, so you can, if you want to, use the black and white adjustment and different other adjustment curves and such levels, all kinds of tricks to create different interesting black and white looks. But what I would like to suggest to you, if you are really into black and white photography, do yourself a treat and get Nick Collection because it has a really, really great filter included called Silver Effects Pro. I want to show you really quick because this is a vital step of this technique, what this can do. So let's go here to the Nick Collection Silver Effects Pro 2. We open that up and when we do, you will see that up here we have presets. You can of course also create your own looks, but you can also, if you want to use these presets, I use the modern presets because they often have this kind of edgy, modern, interesting look at them. I can see here, I have a little bit of dust on my lens. I have to clean that up, but I have already done that in the picture. Don't worry about that. So what you want to have is one look that is brighter and then another one that is darker like this one. And I also decided on one that is softer. And one thing to look out for if you do that is that the grain here is set to the same value. It doesn't have to be at 500, but set both of them to the same value because otherwise you will have different parts of the picture having different grains and that looks a little bit strange. Okay, so export these two into Affinity Photo, which basically means beforehand you want to have two duplicates of your original picture and then just render them in these looks. And also to the same thing to the picture of the sky, as you can see down here, we have my sky picture, one second, there we go. You can see it looks more dramatic and it's black and white, beautiful look. And I added this a little bit to get this really beautiful look of a time-lapse picture of a longer picture, sorry, long time exposure is what I wanted to say. Good. So how do we progress from here? Now, 
First of all, you have your base picture down here, which is the brighter one. You could set the brighter one below or the darker one below. That depends on if you want to add the darker areas or the lighter areas. I'm more a fan of adding the darker areas because I can like work better with that and I want to have most parts bright in this picture, but sometimes it might be the other way around. Okay, good. So uh, the only thing I did here is to apply an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast, as you can see here. And this is simply to push up to make it even brighter and give it some more contrast than uh, the preset had in Nick collection. Then we have the darker version here. And in this case, I applied a levels adjustment, as you can see here, levels adjustment to make it a lot darker, as you can see here. So this already, uh, it still has the original values, but I just pushed a black level in, I pushed a white level in also to give it more contrast. And then I pushed the gamma over as you can see here to the right side to make it much much darker and the reason why I did this is to push these two further apart so one is really dark and one is really bright and high contrast good so now the question is how do you get them to be just in these spots as you can see I applied them to certain areas of the picture. Now, that is actually pretty easy. What you want to do is you create a mask down here, but don't create it right away. You want to hold the Alt key when you do that and then click. And you can see I create a black mask, which means that nothing is visible right now of that picture. You can see here there is no effect, right? So to apply it, for example, to this area in the picture, what you want to do is to use your freehand selection tool and then go over to the picture and hold the shift key. That's important. Hold the shift key and click once, but let go. Don't keep clicking. Just click once. And you can see this now because I press the shift key creates a line. So I can simply go around the outside here, try to be as precise as possible around that shape. And of course, in modern architecture, we have the beautiful benefit that a lot of things are straight lines. So this is quite easy. Now, this is not the final element of that. What you want to do next is that you use the gradient tool and it has to go from black to white. And you can see now, if I pull this in here, the area here, you can see when you click here on the gradient that you've created, it goes usually when you start it from black to white, which is really good because this means that in the area where it's black, I don't see anything of the picture and where it's white, the picture becomes visible. You can see this here, that this becomes very dark in that area. And this means this allows me to now make this picture below gradually visible. And this is really important because I want this not to be like just an area that is darker, but gradually getting brighter, gradually blending into the other picture. So when you have done that, click on the move tool again, on the keyboard, click Control and D to deselect. And you can see now if I turn this on and off, let's zoom out here. I turn this on and off. You can see that this is now only applied to that area only down here. And you can apply this now to any other area of the picture in the same way in the same mask. Just make another selection. Let's make a second one here real quick. For example, here on the side of the building, this is something I want to show you. Um, you should make the selection more precise than I do. Uh, one way to do that is, for example, to use your uh, control key while still holding the shift key and then use your mouse wheel to zoom in here so you have a really good view on where you're setting these points up like so I see be precise make a really good mask around your house around the building that you want to enhance with this technique like so 
and then again we are still at the same mask we are adding another gradient here and just pushing this gradient up here and you can see how beautiful now this part here gets dark this part up here stays bright and so suddenly I have a very dramatic light on my building so this is really really beautiful and you can see let's zoom out here again how powerful this is how much you can shape the surface of the building with that right so let's go back to my finished mask and you can see there I have all these areas changed all right so let's have a look at how I created the sky now for the sky I have used as I said this picture but then I created a mask where I simply selected the outside of the house and then when you have done that go to select invert pixel selection so you select inverted the house so not the house but everything around the house right and create that um, as a mask for the sky good after you have done that what I've done is use um uh curve adjustments the reason I did that is because I wanted the sky to be a lot darker so the brighter areas of the house stick out more against the background as you can see if I don't do that the house is well in a similar value kind of sinking into the background but now if the darker background is here it's kind of standing out it's really popping out of that so that's very nice but of course the background is much too busy we don't want to have these very precise clouds so I did two things first of all I created a motion blur live filter which you can find down here you can see here on live filters motion blur so this is the first thing that I have do uh, this I have done and um this looks very nice by the way here's a little trick you can see that this is on 205 degrees and usually if you move this around it moves in these steps so to move in a finer way what you want to do is to hold the shift key down and then you can go by single digits you can see I can go back to 205 quite easily there we go um now I looked at that and you have these stripes in here which are not ideal because this makes it look like the sky is flying by it's too much motion it's too much energy so I created a Gaussian blur live filter too the reason why I'm using live filters is because then I can go back to that but what I would suggest to you if you do that because these live filters especially for blur need a lot of CPU power um, make a duplicate of this group here with everything in it uh, for the sky with all these kind of blur filters in there and then rasterize it and just turn this layer off so it doesn't take all that power from your computer and you still have this pixel layer here so this makes it a lot easier now here are two more important steps you want to do uh, or you can do right so first of all what I did is again select the house and then create a curves adjustment like so that I made a little bit darker and then again I put a gradient over that selection while it's still active so this again creates a mask where you can see that down here the building is darker and up here the building is brighter so I have this kind of push and also the visual guidance that I'm looking rather at that area of the building not so much at this area of the building so um, that I have a nice dynamic in the picture you can see here right now everything is grabbing attention when I turn this on this part of the picture is grabbing less attention so that's pretty cool and then now this is the last step I have created another copy of the picture that I then made a little bit um, brighter with the exposure so you can see this is really overexposed so um, I used the exposure adjustment for that you can find it in here adjustments and exposure and I push this up so the picture is becoming really bright the reason why I do that is because I want to create very bright highlights on the edges of the building as I've shown you before and again I created this inverted mask like I said hold the alt key and click on mask this creates this dark this black mask which is completely empty you can see if I turn it on and the way now you create these highlights here I was a little bit lazy I didn't make a selection for that what I did instead here is the trick 
is that I used a brush and set it to a small size, as you can see here, 100% hardness, 100% opacity, the color is white. And now if you hold the shift key and click and then click again, it creates a straight line between these two clicks, as you can see here. And so this enables me to simply follow these lines by just clicking on every corner where the line would bend. So you can see this is simply line going up here and then going down here and so on and so on. And I'd only did it for some of the edges, not all of the edges to not overdo it. So that is basically the technique. I hope you have a lot of fun with that. This is super powerful. You can play for hours with this technique and create really beautiful shots from what I would say pretty normal architecture pictures. This is nothing special, but this on the other hand, looks amazing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. See you in my next tutorial. Bye.